Thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, I am Sarah Heaney, and along with my membership team colleague, Robert Menzies, we'll be hosting this morning for a whistle-stop tour of your benefits of being a member of Glasgow Chamber of Commerce. So Glasgow Chamber of Commerce was founded in 1783, when the merchants and traders of Glasgow realised that if they came together, they had a stronger, more resolute voice while trading internationally. Fast forward 200 plus years, and uh, we still pretty much do the same thing. We bring businesses together to connect, to grow, and to be heard. Thanks, Sarah. And as I said, I'm Robert Mendes, and I'm part of the, the membership team. And so thanks for, for your time and investing in your business through our membership. We appreciate this greatly, and look, we've got a lot to get through this morning, but we'll be sharing the details with everyone who's attended, um, who's speaking, um, so in a follow-up email, along with the recording. So we're recording this session as well, and you can give that out to your team. Um, and a kind of top tip is, as part of your membership, it's not for an individual, it's more, it's for the, the organisation to use all the benefits. And um, so it's key to share that amongst the team. And also at the end, we'll do a Q&A session. So please put your questions in the, the chat function or just wait to the end and, and raise your hand. Um, so that's enough for me. So without further ado, we'll go to our first speaker. And it's my great pleasure to introduce our first speaker who is Stuart Patrick, your Chief Executive. Thanks, Robert, and uh, welcome, everybody. Good morning, and uh, great to see everybody joining in to find out how to maximise the membership that you have with uh, the Chamber of Commerce. We're obviously delighted that you are members of the Chamber of Commerce, um, and let's be frank, this has been the oddest year to be a member of uh, a Chamber of Commerce. Um, it is... I think probably the oddest year, I can't really speak for this and to be on this, to be honest, but I, th I suspect it's the oddest year in 237 years. Um, I'm not sure what they did in 1918-19 when the Spanish flu was uh, running, um, but they certainly didn't do this. Uh, there was no, obviously no online interaction. I'm not sure quite how they coped. But suffice to say, um, we are sticking to the absolute fundamental mission that we have always set ourselves uh, as a chamber. You can see it on the, on the banner behind me, supporting our members to help you to grow your businesses uh, and championing Glasgow as a place to do business. Certainly when it comes to supporting our members, it hasn't been feasible to bring everyone together in the way that we normally would in order to encourage connections and to help uh, folks to make those connections across sectors, across business sizes, across uh, various parts of our city region. But um, we have been fighting the corner for uh, our members, um, partially through British Chambers of Commerce and Scottish Chambers of Commerce uh, and locally with our, our colleagues in the city council and other uh, stakeholders to try to get the best support for businesses trying to handle the circumstances that we're in. Um, and we're also uh, recognising that, um, that there are a number of issues that are now going to be really significant for the year ahead. And uh, when it comes to championing Glasgow in 2021, we have three big priorities. Um, in the first case, it'll all be about city recovery. Um, what are we going to do about our city centre? How are we going to help many of those key sectors that have really struggled, the ones facing the consumer, uh, how they've, how they've uh, managed to get through this, uh, how we're going to help them grow back as fast as possible, um, and how we're going to tackle the youth unemployment problem that has now developed as a consequence of COVID. That's, a, that's issue number one. Issue number two is international trade after Brexit transition is over. Um, and you'll possibly hear a little bit about that. Chamber customs, uh, how we deal with the declarations required for importing and exporting goods is the new service that we're producing for you next year. And then finally, COP26 hits town in November 2021, a huge opportunity for Glasgow. The Chamber has chosen to focus on the circular economy uh, as uh, um, a mechanism for uh, tackling net zero and yet making money uh, at the same time. So I hope you'll be joining in. Uh, we'll be meeting with each other more uh, traditionally, hopefully after Easter, uh, and we'll be tackling all those issues together 
all with an aim to help you grow your businesses and to grow Glasgow and its economy. Back to you, Robert. Thanks very much, Stuart. That was fab. Um, next, we'll move straight on to my colleague, Alan Busby, who is our Events and Professional Development Manager. Well, thank you, Sarah, and good morning, everyone. Um, as Sarah mentioned there, um, I am the Events Manager here at the Chamber, and uh, with Jennifer and indeed most of the Chamber team, um, I'm responsible for organising all of the events and training opportunities that you get as part of your membership. Annually, we offer over 100 events to our members, and they're designed to support members develop, grow, be inspired, and to maximise the opportunities available to them. I'll tell you a wee bit about the event series that we run. Um, we're quite well known, and indeed, one of the first events that I ever worked, uh, worked on at the Chamber was speed networking. Um, they usually take place over lunch, um, with businesses having a chance to see, share a bit of an elevator pitch with um, other people at the table. And then um, after the first course, um, we do a bit of a swap and everyone comes back together um, and, and different tables with different audiences and uh, they have the opportunity to do it all again with a new audience. We also run a lot of business breakfasts on topics to help businesses um, grow and develop and explore some of the, the legal um, um, issues that are around that day. We do a series of events called Women's Networking Lunches, um, which is uh, where we get keynote speakers and, and have an opportunity to bring together a, an audience and network again. And perhaps one of our most high profile talks is our Glasgow Box series, which is supported by the Clydesdale Bank and Advocacy Business School. A series of high profile business leaders who come along, share their story, and reflect on topics which relate to their expert, expertise. This year, we've hosted um, quite, quite a few of them. We've done one with Malcolm Roughhead, um, of Visit Scotland, Gillian Doherty of the Data Lab. Donald Martin, um, who's the editor at the Herald, and John Stanton, the chief executive of the Beer Group, amongst many, many others. The other thing I would mention is we also offer a series of awards, um, which include the Inspiring City Awards, which we deliver in partnership with the Herald, which celebrate and recognise the businesses and organisations and individuals who go, an extra, who go the extra mile to contribute to the well-being and economic prosperity of the city. The Glasgow Business Awards is our largest event on our calendar and it calls together businesses from around the city to um, celebrate business excellence and achievement. Both awards have a wide array of categories and are free to enter fantastic, fantastic opportunities to showcase some of your achievements throughout the year. But 2020, of course, everything has changed. What I've done is I've told you our sort of normal programme that we've been running up until this year. And the restrictions this year have forced us to move all our events online and deliver them virtually while the restrictions are in place. Despite the restrictions, we've actually delivered in excess of 130 virtual events already this year since we entered the lockdown in March. And we've covered many topics um, to help your business during these times, um, during these challenging and changing times, as well as sharing examples of good practice and exploring some ways to ensure your business is being compliant with the ever changing legislative requirements at the moment. Some of you may have had the opportunity to attend our Glasgow in the COVID-19 World virtual event three weeks ago, where we pulled together a panel of acad academics, economists and business leaders from across the city to discuss where we are as a city's pandemic. And I do hope some of you had the opportunity to come to it. And just quickly, as we move into 2021, uh, we intend to keep the momentum moving and we're planning a wide array of events which will be delivered both virtually and, as Stuart said, hopefully some face-to-face. Some of the events we want to put in for then in 2021 as we're working on a, a speaker lineup for next year, which will see us welcome back some of our previous speakers from across all of the years, as well as exploring some new themes and topics. Our Glasgow Business Awards will take place in October and they're going to launch early in the year, new year. So please check out glasgowbusinessawards.com in January and learn how your business can take part. And we're also organising a chamber conference in March in partnership with the Royal Bank of Scotland, which will follow on from Glasgow in the COVID world and explore how Glasgow will emerge from the pandemic and create a business environment which will allow businesses to recover and grow. One last thing I should also mention is there's training opportunities. Um, and in early in 2021, we intend to a full training programme to make sure that your business fully understands how it can trade and work with our new relationship with the EU at the end of the transition period. And of course, there'll be courses to help you develop your leadership and your teams. And sorry, Sarah, I've got one last point. Um, Stuart mentioned that 
but next year is the year of COP for Glasgow, and we are planning several events to ensure that we can celebrate and showcase opportunities for all businesses and of course across the year. So please check out Glasgow Business at Glasgow Chamber of Commerce.com and um, the latest in all our events and training opportunities. I do apologise for it's long. Sarah, back over to you. <laughs> Thanks, thanks, Alan. And and next we'll we'll, we'll jump on to um, the the marketing side. So um, the next speaker is is Rachel Grant, who is our digital content lead. Hi everyone. Um, so I'm Rachel, and I look after all the digital communications for the chamber. So I'm just going to kind of talk through all the different ways that we can promote our members' uh, news to the wider membership and also to the uh, Glasgow business community. So we really encourage all our members to send in any um, press releases, company updates, any activity to the marketing inbox, um, which is marketing at glasgowchamberofcommerce.com, but we'll be able to send you the details after this meeting. So anything that we receive into there, um, we will share with our membership. So it gets put onto the news section of our website. And then from there, we have lots of different channels that we can um, promote the uh, stories too. So um, social media is a huge um, platform for us. So we have um, 45,000 followers across all our different platforms. Um, and our two sort of strongest is our Twitter, who's got um, almost 17,000 followers, and then LinkedIn, uh, which we have over 9,000. So again, I'd really encourage all our members to follow us on our social media pages, because that's where you'll find out all the latest updates from the Chamber activity, anything that we're um, lobbying for, uh, any events, any other member news or new members joining. So it's really the best way to sort of keep up to date with our daily activity. Um, and again, I can share all the different handles so that you can follow that. Um, we also have a private LinkedIn group, which is really focused on sharing sort of best business practice or um, blogs. So um, again, if you uh, search for Glasgow Chamber of Commerce on LinkedIn, uh, you can request to join the private uh, LinkedIn group as well. Um, we also have email communications, uh, which go out every week. So we have two um, bulletins, which go out um, one on a Monday and one, day, one on a Wednesday every week. And then we have different dedicated emails sort of sprinkled throughout the month. Um, so the Monday bulletin is really focused on the events that are coming up and the um, Wednesday bulletin is on the new stories. Um, again, I'd encourage uh, everyone to sign up to the database. Um, so you can do that by sending in your email address to the marketing inbox, because uh, we really don't want it to just be one contact, contact per member. We really want the whole business to join the membership, uh, to join the database, because someone in the marketing department might find something different useful from someone in the finance department. So I think it would um, really encourage everyone within the organisation to uh, sign up to the database. And again, if um, you think there's someone on the, our database that's might have left the company, um, you can also get in touch So uh, through the marketing inbox and I'll be able to remove or update um, your business contacts. Um, we also have a quarterly magazine which goes out. So our winter edition just came out last week. Um, this is really the sort of like top news stories from our membership from uh, throughout that quarter, along with the uh, Glasgow business news and uh, sort of just general business news. So this edition was really focused on the sort of pipe down to COP and um, the green recovery. So um, within the magazine, there's uh, sort of options for paid advertising as well. Uh, so say you have a particular product you want to launch, you can have adverts or also advertorials. Um, and then the other paid advertising option that we have is you can advertise in our bulletin. So if anyone's interested in that, um, get in touch with the, uh, to the marketing inbox again and I can send you um, all the prices that we have. And finally, we have our Chamber YouTube channel, um, which is really growing uh, since uh, COVID and everyone working remotely. So it's really varied content on our YouTube channel. So it's um, updates from Stuart or Chief Exec or sort of webinars that you might have missed. And also we have an interview series which is with different um, sort of figures throughout Glasgow. So we've had like George Browie uh, and Mark Beaumont. So it's really varied, it's not purely a uh, business. Um, so I would recommend everyone to subscribe to that channel as well. And then, then you'll be alerted anytime we upload a video. So 
just search for Glasgow Chamber of Commerce on YouTube and then you'll be able to subscribe from there. Um, that's it for me. Thanks, Rachel. And quickly before before we move on to the next speaker, there's just kind of a couple of points to make. Oh, when you log into the, the portal, you get access to the members directory, which is a list of, of members and email addresses to our main contacts with each organisation. And you can contact these members with your messaging as a fellow, fellow chamber member, or if there's a particular companies you want to engage with, then we can do facilitate email introductions. And um, also there's the members offers page where members can, can put in offers to each other and kind of utilize them themselves. It's a good way of kind of seeing what each other is doing and kind of just offer maybe certain discounts and things to each other as well. It's, it's quite a good part. And I know Sarah's got a, another top tip before we, we move on to the next speaker. Yeah, thanks, Robert. I think kind of as, as Rachel already alluded to, making sure that your personal uh, record as well as your business record is up to date so um, that you're receiving all the, the comms that you want from us, but also making sure that your business description is correct so that other members can find you. That's probably a, a, a top tip from me. Um, next, I'll move on to uh, international trade. So I'll go to my colleague, uh, Seren Porteous, who's our international trade development executive. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Seren, as Sarah said, and I work on the international team. Um, and as Sarah mentioned before, international trade has been an important part of the Chamber's work. And I guess we just want to make sure that you as our members um, are supported in this area and that we are helping our Scottish businesses to grow and expand internationally as much as we can. Um, so I'll just explain a few ways that you can be involved with this. So one of the main things that we offer are international trade missions. Um, obviously these are all virtual at the moment, but we do hope to get back to market as soon as we can. Um, so a trade mission is, um, it focuses on a particular city or country and it provides you as the business um, with an opportunity to join a Scottish cohort of businesses who are specifically interested in that chosen market. Um, and usually we focus on about two to three different sectors. So for example, in January, we have our, um, our trade mission to Barcelona, focusing on the renewable industry, renewable energy industry and green tech. Um, and then also in March, we are um, hosting a trade mission to New York. So as part of the missions, you will have the opportunity to join group sessions looking more in depth at um, how to do business in that market and also group sector specific sessions. So focusing on probably a more in depth um, overview of the sectors. Um, and then also you'll have the opportunity to join business to business meetings. And this is really probably where the most value is added because we'll work with you in advance to identify um, well, to understand your requirements and your interests, and then with our partners to identify the most suitable and appropriate matches in market for you. So that's one area you can be involved with. Um, another thing is that we have a huge international network of partners, organisations, individuals. Um, we have our 1783 Presidents Network, which is a network of global Glaswegians who live abroad. Um, and then we also have uh, partners like SDI, um, the China British Business Council. So if you are looking at a particular market, then I would say we probably, it's more than likely we do have connections there. So do get in touch and we are happy to do introductions um, and support you in the best way that we can. So yeah, if you have any international queries or um, need any advice, then we will be able to support you either directly um, through our own services or indirectly through our, our membership network and international partners. Um, and I'd also just say, if you are thinking about uh, a particular market that you'd like to trade with, but it's not on our schedule for trade missions, do get in touch because um, it could be that it affects where we plan our next mission. So all the information for the trade missions particularly is, um, well, our next two are up on our website and the plan will get put up on our website in the next couple of weeks because we have identified all the markets that we are hoping to go to next year. Um, so yeah, if you have anything, any queries for International then just get in touch with me. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And, and that um, leads nicely to the, the next speaker. So it's it's on certification department and customs declarations, and it will be Richard Muir, our Deputy Chief Executive, who will talk, talk us through that. 
Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Sarah, for organising this morning's session and great to see everybody. Um, thanks very much for coming. Uh, I'll keep my contribution reasonably brief, um, but uh, as we've talked about this morning already, one of the key things of membership of the Chamber is all about engagement and you guys are all engaging, so that's, that's great to see you all this morning. And as a number of the guys have said already, international trade is absolutely key for Glasgow Chamber of Commerce and it's really in our DNA and goes back right to the very start of the Chamber. And of course, we have to confront big issues and one of the big issues at the moment is Brexit. So we're now less than one month, um, can you believe it, away from the end of the transition period. And, and actually, even if there is a deal, there will be a significant uh, process change for businesses who are importing and exporting from the EU. So there's a whole bunch of changes which are gonna come into place. Um, and one of those is gonna be the requirement for ever more uh, customs declarations documents. So our colleagues at British Chambers of Commerce have been working very closely with HMRC and the DIT on a revised format for preference and non-preference certificates of origin to get your goods in and out of markets. And this service will be ready and available in time for the 1st of January. So we have continuity of service with revised UK documentation. Interesting to note that the Office of National Statistics estimate that the number of customs declarations uh, for UK traders will increase from what is roughly about 55 million a year at the moment up to as, as much as 220 million uh, every year. So businesses really need to have their plans in place or their goods could easily get held up at ports. So we would urge you, if you're involved in importing or exporting, um, to, to check the Chamber uh, website to get in touch with the team. Um, we need to support our members and our customers on a UK-wide Chamber's custom service that we've got in place, and we've been working very closely with the team in London. There's now going to be over 200 customs agents in the 45 British accredited British Chambers of Commerce across the UK, of which we are one. We'll have a capacity eventually across the network to deliver at least half a million of those customs declarations. So we're in the process at the moment on, of onboarding our customers and we're working very closely, as I said, with BCC. <clears throat> and we're, we're talking to all of our members, particularly members who are currently importing and exporting. But we're also laying on uh, accredited international trade training for our staff, but also for our members. So again, if you're involved in import and export and, you, and some of your team might need training input, please get in touch because we can, we can provide that accredited training in-house for teams to manage the process. And actually you can get up to 100% funding from HMRC for that training as well. So we're very much here to help. So broadly, in summary, we're working with British Chambers of Commerce on, on the Chamber Customs Strategy and Plan. We've got two uh, full-time members of staff now working on customs and we've got the ability to bring in another couple of members of the team and I see Carol from the team is on the call this morning so that's great Carol Griffiths. Um, we provide training for staff and for customers, we're onboarding for, for members to get involved and to come to us now so that we can help them. Uh, we have already got some members signed up so if, if these issues do affect you please get in touch and let us know and I'm happy to take any any questions at the end around Chamber Customs, but clearly it's going to be a really, really significant issue from the 1st of January. So please get in touch if you import or export. Thank you. Over to Sarah and Robert. Great, thanks Richard. And so talking about international trade brings me nicely onto the City Council's Glasgow Business Growth Programme. Um, the aim of this programme is to create a connected and collaborative network of specialist support and expertise so SMEs can access this support that uh, best suits their growth aspirations for absolutely no charge whatsoever. Um, so Glasgow Chamber supports the internationalisation lot directly, but we also have member businesses that are supporting each of the 10 lots, which include things like design thinking, leadership, innovation and uh, financial management and there's a whole host of other things so we'll make sure that we include a link to find out how you can access this free support and how it could help your business to grow in the email follow-up afterwards. Thanks Sarah and leading into 
And the, the, the chamber is, is proud that we have two projects that run out of, of the chamber, which are DYW Glasgow and Circular Glasgow. Um, so I'll let the, the team talk talk you through this and, and what, what they're about. And first, firstly, I'll go to, to Nikki, um, the programme manager at DYW Glasgow. Thanks, Robert. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. Uh, as Robert said, uh, I'm programme manager for Developing Young Workforce Glasgow, which is a Scottish government uh, funded uh, initiative that was set up in the wake of the previous financial uh, crisis in 2008. Uh, the aim was to effect change that would help drive down the, the soaring youth unemployment uh, by 2021, ironically enough, which we, we managed to do quite effectively, just nicely in time for, for, for COVID. So that, that same situation we find ourselves in again. So what we look to do is to uh, facilitate valuable interactions between industry and education and to embed uh, these interactions into the curriculum to try and affect change with regards to career aspiration with positive um, progressions. We work very closely um, with the City Council, with the Scottish Government, with all third sector uh, stakeholders such as uh, Skills Development Scotland, um, SCVO, everyone across the board, but as well as that, the, the, the Glasgow business community from sole traders all the way up to our, our larger kind of multinational companies. These interventions can take a, a variety of forms from something as simple as CV checking and mock interviews, all the way up to, to work experience placements and internships and, and everything in between. Part of our role is also to uh, seek out particular funding or incentive streams for our employers because we're concerned with, with kind of encouraging growth. And the, the latest kind of arm to our operation is working closely with Glasgow City Council. We're in a position to offer 100 uh, fully funded uh, employment placements for, for um, 100 of our, our young people that have left school. Um, we can then look towards uh, engaging further with the Glasgow City Council to convert them into apprenticeships or longer term uh, employment opportunities at the Glasgow Living Wage. So in essence, it is about um, embedding into the curriculum, offering real, valuable, tangible um, industry uh, engagements within uh, the, uh, the school environment. Obviously, we're, we're looking at doing things slightly different in this, this kind of COVID and hopefully post-COVID age with regards to digital interventions, but also looking at the, the green recovery, how we can make uh, the youth employment strategy link in with the green recovery. Obviously, as has been touched on uh, previously, COP26 is looming on the horizon, and it's actually a massive um, it's, a, it's a massive issue for, for our young people. Um, so, yeah, really happy to engage with any organisation of any size to implement any kind of initiative you might have, or just to kind of find out more about things like the, the, the apprenticeship family, which is three strands, foundation, model, and graduate, to see how that can benefit your business. We know that 16 to 24 year olds are going to be disproportionately affected um, by COVID. And within that, we've also got gender disparity, disparity between um, different uh, equalities groups. So we're really looking to be as creative uh, and proactive as possible. So anyone that would like to get involved, um, I've just seen a, a message there from Sam, absolutely um, really looking forward to linking in with everyone and anyone. Thanks very much, Nikki. And I'll, I'll come back to you in a, a moment on Kickstart as well. But Next, I'll, I'll go to, to Cheryl McCulloch, who's our Senior Project Manager for Circular Glasgow. Uh, morning, everyone, and uh, delighted to be all joined the Chamber and that you're here this morning. Um, hopefully, this is a, a great sort of way for you to get a snapshot of everything that the Chamber offers, um, although I appreciate by the end of this, you'll probably be saying who said what. Um, but uh, as Robert said, I work in the Circular Glasgow Initiative, which is obviously an initiative of Glasgow Chamber of Commerce, and it's very much about as Stuart touched on already, um, helping Glasgow's businesses to consider and adopt circular economy principles. So for those of you who don't know, and normally if we have these events in person, I always ask people to put their hand up if they've heard of what the circular economy is. So I'll give you a pass on that one today. Um, but the circular economy is really a, an economic shift to help businesses move from a kind of linear, you make something, you use something, you dispose of something model to um, changing products and services to keep them in as use for as long as possible as high a value as possible. So to keep it extremely simple, which is what I'm all about, is it's about looking at keeping products and services in a way that is enough for everyone forever. Um, it's, the circular economy is a fantastic opportunity for businesses to be considering and um, to help you make money, save money and actually just identify ways to try and help um, towards some of the net zero targets that may be coming in. And we're here to really work with businesses across the Glasgow community, whether that's SME, right up to larger corporates to really 
I suppose engaging what the circular economy is and what that means for business, so whether that's about looking at collaboration, talking to your customers, because actually customers really care about some of this stuff, um, or actually looking at you know simple things like what waste you have and what opportunities or maybe have to, to, to use things and think about things differently. Um, we're working in a range of different sectors and um, we've got a particular focus around areas such as construction and um, food and drink, manufacturing, events, when we can have events again. But we're really keen to talk to any business to tell them a bit more about what we're doing and how we can possibly help their business to look at different um, ideas and opportunities to become a bit more circular. Um, I'll probably leave it at that without bombarding me with too much information, but more than happy to take any questions um, after this or to, to pick up directly with you. So thank you and I'll pass back to Robert. Thanks, Cheryl. That, that was great. And I'll, I'll go back to, to Nikki um, just to, to, to give a brief overview of the, the Kickstart scheme as well. Thanks, Robert. Um, some of you may, may have heard or may be aware of the Kickstart initiative, um, which is a £2 billion investment from the UK government to offer young people aged uh, 18 to 24 who are currently in receipt of universal credit the opportunity to have a six month um, placement, it's called, it's essentially employment with an organisation. It's fully funded um, for 25 hours at the national minimum wage. Um, if an employer would like to top up uh, the length of, of the, the weekly um, the weekly operation of the wage, they're, they're quite able to do so. They would have to kind of cover that cost themselves. But the idea of it is to make that young person at the end of the six months um, as employable as possible to sustain that placement if the opportunity is there or to make them as attractive to an external um, opportunity as possible. So as well as the, the, the fully funded 25 hours a week for six months, there's also a £1,500 development grant that's available to employers as well. The Chamber is a, a gateway employer, so we're actually dealing for, for all of the compliance, all of the admin, all of the startup on behalf of, of some of our members who are coming to us. And believe me, they've been very grateful because as we, we've gone along, it's been a moving feast. The eligibility criteria has changed a lot. So there's a lot of heavy lifting to be done, which the, the Chamber team are, are able to do on, on our members' behalf. Um, and we're linking in with uh, our partners at Jobs and Business Glasgow. who are going to offer a wraparound service, which has actually enabled us to bring in more employers who wouldn't otherwise have been eligible. It is a great scheme. Um, there's some kind of things to be ironed out. And as I say, it, it is ever changing. But we're very confident that we've got a, a, a substantial amount of um, roles that we can develop and deliver in Glasgow. And if anyone would like to find out more, please do get in touch. There's a, a whole kind of suite of, of information we can provide. Perfect. Thank you very much, Nikki. Um, and so now that you've met some of the Chamber team, it's my pleasure to introduce some of our partners. So through British Chambers of Commerce, we have some long-standing affinity partners. And I think this is a really important point to make is that if used correctly, any one of these offers can give you savings that would far outweigh your organization's annual membership fee with the Chamber. So firstly, I will pass over to Niall from MoneyCorp. Good morning, can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Great, great. Hello everybody, thanks for having me. Um, nice to see some familiar faces, but for those who don't know, Niall Handy, I run the Chamber FX Benefit. Um, and in in summary, the, the benefit gives three different uh, outcomes. The very basic one is cheaper uh, and cost effective ways of making either UK payments, sterling to sterling, or predominantly international payments. So if you're using the bank still, for example, you, my good feel is that you'd save a significant amount of money actually just by doing exactly the same thing via the Chamber FX benefit. So for example, you we don't charge uh, you guys for international payments if you route them through chamber effects um on average banks charge between 20 and 40 pound per transaction so if you do nothing different and just do it through chamber effects you should should get a benefit there um immediately the second one which is actually the, probably the biggest one for for the majority of chamber members is those people who are looking for support and guidance around how to trade internationally so this links in very much with, with Sarah and richard and that people who are importing or exporting uh don't necessarily assume that you're doing it the way you're doing it is right because there's loads of new ways and different ways of doing it. And it's my job be the, the benefit to try and help you guys come up with ideas and solutions to either maximize the rates that you're getting, make them more efficient, or in, 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 a, in a longer term, have a strategy around how you deal or, or trade internationally, whether it's importing or exporting. So things like um, removing risk. So, so 
which we did was 24 minutes in before we mentioned Brexit word, but that Brexit word has been quite big for us, as you can imagine. And what we try and do is, which links into the third part is, we try to provide research and guidance and help. What does Brexit mean? Or what does the US elections mean? Or what does co how is that going to affect currencies and therefore your profit or your costs? Uh, and how to remove or at least manage that risk for your businesses. So happy to get in, uh, get, get in contact with me if you need to. The short version is if you have any kind of ex ex international exposures, please give us a shout. Uh, we can do a little FX audit. We can go through some things to see if there's savings or if there's anything we can help with. And if not, no, no worries. But as Sarah said, from our perspective, I think sometimes the savings can be so great, actually. Banks are quite expensive in the norm. Um, and therefore, you should be getting your membership feedback quite quickly. So any questions, just shout. So thanks for having me. Fab, thanks very much, Niall. Uh, I'll move straight on to uh, Mitchell Patterson from Westfield Health. Well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Mitchell and I'm the Health and Wellbeing Consultant at Westfield Health. Um, I cover Glasgow and Scotland. So for anyone that isn't aware, um, we are the leading health cash plan provider and partner of the British Chamber of Commerce and Glasgow Chamber. We provide a range um, of options for businesses from cash plans to mental health first aid training and even private health insurance. Um, at Westfield, we are dedicated to making a healthy difference to the quality of life of our customers um, and your employees. The plans that we offer are very affordable with our main aim of looking after your staff's physical and mental well-being by giving money back towards their essential health care bills. Um, we can help you make your workplace a healthier and happier place to work. So if you want to hear any more um, about the benefits of bringing a health cash plan to your workforce, then just get in touch with us um, and we'll have a chat and we can decide on the best options for you and your employees. Fabulous. Thank you very much, Thank Mitchell. You. And nice to have you in the team as well. Welcome to Westfield. Um, next, I'll move on to Steve Charles from Quest. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Steve from Quest. We supply most of the UK chambers with the four services that I'm just going to briefly run through with you now. Uh, I would point out that all these services are included in your membership fee, so you don't have to pay for any of them. Uh, there's Chamber HR, Chamber Legal, Chamber Health and Safety and Chamber Tax. They're accessed through uh, an advice line number. 01455852037 gives you access to five advice lines hr health and safety legal tax and vat there's a website that's got nearly 800 downloadable template documents in it and you've also got employment tribunal cover so chamber hr is an advice line uh, that's available 24 7 365 days a year a very employer focused service absolutely your employees can't use it against you so you've got access to advisors, you've got access to over 400 employment documents, and you've also got employment tribunal cover, which is very important because there's a big spike in employment tribunals at the moment. Chamber Legal is also an advice line uh, that's available. You've got access to experienced advisors. And if you're a really small business and you don't employ staff, then this is a, something that's really important to you. It can help you with debt recovery, contract disputes, things like that. You've got access to documents. You've got Chamber Health and Safety, which is all about compliance. The main thing there is the website where you've got access to all the core eight health and safety documents you need, including the health and safety policy, risk assessment forms, guidance notes on how to do risk assessments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Chamber Tax is all gives you access to tax and VAT advisors. So if you're worried about HMRC investigations because they're ramping up the investigations at the minute, you can call the Chamber Tax Department. Now, normally I can spend half an hour talking about these services, so this really is a whistle-stop tour, I'm afraid. But those are the four services that you've got access to. As I said, they're including your membership fee. You know, you could pay a thousand pounds for these if you went into the open market. Um, I would just draw your attention to the fact that don't forget you've got access to all these 800 documents. They're really, really valuable. So it's advice and it's documents, it's employment tribunal cover, and you don't have to pay anything extra to access any of them. What a bargain. <laughs> Great. So, okay, that's it. Fab, thanks, Steve. Yeah. And what I would say is to any of the members on the call, um, all of you will be allocated a um, 
a number and a password for to access Quest. So if any of you are yeah. unsure of that, then do get in touch with me and I can make sure that we get that to the right person within the organization too. Um, next, I'll go to Esther Saho from the AA. Esther, are you there? I'm on mute. Oh, oh. Sorry about that. <laughs> <Right>. um, I, <laughs> uh, my name is Esther. I work for the AA. I've worked for the AA for 29 years. I cover the whole of the UK um, and I manage the relationship between the Chamber of Commerce. Now, as a member of the Chamber, you're entitled to uh, preferential rates for your breakdown cover. Uh, this relationship has been in force since 1998. Uh, you're entitled to up to 67% mm -hmm. of your um, membership fee. Um, we cover any business vehicle from one vehicle up to 500, um, as long as they're under three and a half tons gross vehicle weight. Um, chamber members have got a special promotion code, and with that code, it then generates the actual rates that you're entitled to. Um, the discounts can be applied when you join and also when you renew. Any changes during that um, year will be at the preferential rates also. If I just give you an example of um, a popular level of cover, which we call Fleet Y4, that would be like roadside, home start and relay. That's the price the chamber members would pay uh, is £56.92. Our published rates are actually um, £178 per vehicle. So you can see there's a saving of £121 per vehicle just because you're a member of the Chamber of Commerce. So not only do you get that fantastic discount, you then have access to our award-winning service. So we've got over 3,000 patrols, and then we've got a backup of about nearly 500 agents who can come out to you. We average, we fix eight out of 10 vehicles at the roadside, and we'd normally get to you within half an hour. So I mean, that's a very quick um, summary of that. We also provide um, articles through to the British Chamber of Commerce. So it could be anything from um, what's happening within the EV market at the moment, anything about ultra low emission zone. And we, we're trying to make sure that this, these articles get out to you um, on a regular basis. So it helps you keep your business moving forward. So um, that's it for me, but I'm happy to answer any questions at the end or during the rest of the presentation. I appreciate it. So firstly, I'll go to Carolyn Morris to, to discuss the, the business mentoring. Good morning and thank you very much for the opportunity. Can you all hear me okay? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, the business mentoring service that we offer. I work for Scottish Chambers of Commerce, we're the umbrella organisation for the whole chamber network. But one of the initiatives that we've been running since 2002 is a business mentoring one. And we do that by supporting small, medium and growth enterprises across Scotland by using the skill sets of a mentor. So you at Glasgow Chamber, obviously various members have engaged with us in the past with regards to that. So whether you're a young business, whether your business has been trained for many years there's an opportunity there for you to engage with somebody that's been there and done it we have uh, in excess of a thousand mentors that support us uh, these are business owners entrepreneurs and chief execs of large multinationals that all give a window of their time to support the business community um, so it's a wonderful opportunity to to engage with these individuals we've kept it simple um, in as much as that <laughs> we realize that businesses the, big, the biggest challenge has really been about time sometimes for them so we've uh, we, we've we, we've enabled them to be able to engage with with businesses and mentors for a couple of hours once a month um, have a one-to-one -one meeting obviously uh, with the, the situation at the moment with COVID that's been a little bit more of a challenge so but the technology is there to enable them to engage uh, and have communication which has been great because for me one of the things I have very clearly experienced over the last few months is that personal and professional isolation that businesses have uh, you know experienced during this challenging time so to be able to help them support them during that time has been great um so as i said it's 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 a, it's a great service for business owners that want to engage with other individuals uh, who have uh, experience in a particular area that they're needing assistance with uh, whatever their challenges are as a business will be mirrored by a mentor's competency and skill it may be a specific sector it may not but um, I'm, I'm privileged to have uh, the support of some of the individuals that have been with us for a while uh, in supporting business 
services, um, um, in particular with Glasgow Chamber anyway. So, um, you know, I'd be happy to, to speak offline with any businesses that feel that they want to find out a wee bit more about it and is it right for them, is it suitable for them. Um, um, as I said, my name's Caroline Morris and I'm here to support you um, with any challenges you may have with regards to going forward in the future uh, with a mentor. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks, Caroline. And I'll, I'll move on to um, Ruth Hunter, who's the Partnership and Digital Engagement for the Business IP Centre at the Mitchell Library. Are you there, Ruth? Just trying to find Ruth on my screen. She was there a second ago. She might have just dropped out. Okay, I'll, um, let me know if she, if she comes back on, but I'll, I'll move on to her, who was um, scheduled to be our last speaker and a bit of a, a chamber legend, but um, <laughs> I've, I've um, all this, all the, all, everything we went through so far is, is the, the, the essential membership package. Um, and Elaine, Roger, my colleague, who's the, the client relationship manager, will go through the kind of partner level, what you get on on top of the, the essential level if, you, if you're looking to, to join it or move up to the partnership level. Okay, thanks very much, Robert. I don't know about the word legend, but I've certainly been at the Chamber for a very long time, so um, lovely to see you all today. Um, as as um, Robert said, I my role at the Chamber currently is to look after our silver partners, and we've got around about 70 of them at the moment. So. Silver Partnership, what is it? Really, on top of all these amazing benefits um, of essential membership that you've just heard from everybody, um, a Silver Partnership offers you the opportunity to engage at a more strategic level. It might be that you're interested in supporting the growth and future direction of the city. You might be wanting to build business opportunities through new and influential relationships. You might be interested in our policy and lobbying side of things, which gives you the opportunity to engage with business and political leaders. As a silver partner, you would be invited to join our policy forums, of which we have five, Brexit, business and innovation, international trade and tourism, people and place. At the moment, we've put all of those policy forums on hold because we have established a Glasgow Business Billions Council, which we set up really um, as the pandemic started in a bid to mitigate the impact of COVID on the business community. And that's been working fantastically well as a network for you to engage with, to hear from speakers and to share the challenges of, of the current period. Stern mentioned earlier our President 1783 network, which is around 380 local and 150 global plus regions. So you would be invited to join that. You would also have the opportunity to attend meetings with the leader of the City Council and other local and national politicians, and key decision makers. In addition to that, you have the opportunity to attend partner lunches and influence, uh, influencer dinners. You don't have to be a large business to become a, a silver partner. It just may suit you to be engaging at that level um, instead. So happy to talk to you about a silver partnership at any time. And there's more. Um, on top of the benefits of all of the essential and all of the silver partnerships, there is the, there is the opportunity to a gold or platinum partner. Now, these partnerships offer a bespoke package that supports your business's specific goals and ambitions. Through invites to exclusive events, dinners and briefings, you'll have access to key decision makers. And my colleague, Susan Mackay, who is our commercial director, would be happy to talk to you about these opportunities at any time. Information and more details about all of the packages are on our website, so do check them out. But in the meantime, many thanks again for joining us and I'll pass back to Sarah and Robert. Thank you. Thanks very much, Elaine. Um, I think that Ruth has managed to rejoin uh, us again. So I'll go to her and see if she wants to tell us just a quick uh, update on the Business IP Centre at the Mitchell Library. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Hi, I'm Ruth from the Business and IP Centre, uh, Glasgow, based at the Mitchell Library, and we are your business information partner, and we are here to help you with all your business information needs, so if it's, you know, researching new markets, maybe want to do maybe a bit of research in IP areas, like, uh, you know, the trademarks have been granted in other jurisdictions, etc. Our team is there to help you. We have 
do subscribe to a range of quality premium uh, business information resources, including British Standards Online, which you can access as a read-only resource from your desk just with a library card. Um, IBIS World, another first-class market research resource, and uh, one of our popular um, resources is Financial Analysis. sales and marketing lists and we can compile those to your specification. Now just now uh, we are, um, the Mitchell is closed due to the COVID restrictions so the best way uh, to get support from us is via our email inquiry service business at glasgowlife.org.uk and I'll make sure that information is circulated to you after the event and just to sign off uh, uh, this year I've been working on a Power Up project, which is an initiative by Good Things Foundation with the financial support of JP Morgan to help uh, sole traders and micro businesses in Glasgow to upskill digitally. And I'm delighted to announce that in January we're going to be running a series of 10 online sessions uh, in various digital topics. So if uh, you or any of your staff would like to come along, it's all going to be online. Be absolutely delighted if you would sign up and I'll make sure that information is circulated to you as well. And that will probably go live next week. So thank you for listening and please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. We're always delighted to hear from Chamber members at the Mitchell. So business at glasgowlife.org.uk. Thank you. Thanks very much, Ruth. Um, so just before we we had hoped to have a bit of a Q and A session uh, towards the end, but I can see that we're rapidly running out of time. So please do pop any questions that you've got in the chat, and uh, Robert and I will will come back to you after the event. Um, I wanted to let you know about our WeG chat events that we've got running. So designed to give members a digital platform to grab a coffee and have a chat amongst peer peers. Sorry. <laughs> Um, so our next and final Ouija chat of 2020 is a week tomorrow, so Friday the 11th of December at 11am, um, and that's hosted by myself and Robert. And I do hope to see you there, so it'll give you an opportunity to network and to introduce your business to the community. Um, yeah, so I, that's pretty much us out of time, so I hope that you found the session of use and that you picked up a few tips to help you and your business hit the ground running for the rest of this year and into 2021. I uh, just finally want to say a huge thank you to all of our speakers and an even bigger, uh, a bigger thank you to you, all of our members. Thank you very much for coming.